Hi right, folks, this is the lab activity for the afternoon session of week 10 on July 19. Uh, you're asked to generate a mechanism like so, and this is from uh, an old uh, final exam. A mechanism like so, which has two degrees of freedom. One of them is a, a prismatic one, which is sliding, uh, this cylinder is sliding up and down. And then the other one is a rubber one where this cylinder is rotating. And you're expected to uh, put these rules, these rules into this uh, mechanism. Uh, they have uh, independent uh, displacement versus time and angular uh, rotation versus time. And notice that the breakpoints are also different. So you're going to have to write program, and it's a, it's a wise idea to use two rules, one for each one of these, because these breakpoints are not the same. Uh, it would be more efficient to do it as two separate rules instead of trying to put everything in a single rule. All right. So we have uh, this piece that is translating along the yellow yellow base and is also rotating about its axis. Now, the information that's given to you is uh, the speed, the linear translational speed of uh, uh, or position of the uh, the gray piece is given by uh, uh, what is indicated here. So you take any point on it, the position of it uh, uh, is given by this, uh, as it starts to move, the position of it as a function of time which is given like that, and the rotation of it, the angular rotation of it as a function of time is given by the curve that you see here. Now notice that uh, notice that uh, uh, the breakpoints of these are different. Uh, the example that I did in class, uh, whatever things changed here, also changed down there. That is not the case there. And I mentioned that it is easier to do problems of this type, where the breakpoints are different, as indicating two rules. Uh, governing governing the motion of this mechanism instead of a single rule. Because if you try to do that as a single rule, there'll be a lot of if statement, if things is between zero and five, if things are between five and six, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is that notice I'm asking you to plate the trace here, the trace of a point, the center of this, for example, by the way, using your own dimensions. Now that trace will depend on how fast these things are moving. Now, everything that we have done before, or at least most of the mechanism that we dealt before that I asked you to plot the trace was a single degree of freedom system. In other words, it didn't matter uh, how fast things happened. A particular point that I wanted the trace of always followed the same thing. But this is not a single degree of freedom system. It's a two degree of freedom system where the two are tied through this uh, these rules and the, the trace of a point on it will actually depend on these rules, okay? So before you can run three, because before, before you can get information about three, you must be doing simulation with laws and these law, these are the laws that you're gonna be uh, uh, using and uh, that's the main difference, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, start with my uh, product. There we are, we are save it, file, save management. <clears throat> I'll call it morning. Your desktop, uh, where is this? Desktop, new folder. And I'll call this thing uh, 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 homework eight. Homework eight, morning. Okay, <clears throat> so first I'm gonna insert the base, insert a new part in there. I'll call it the base. On that vertical plane, I will sketch. <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll draw a rectangle here, centered rectangle. Uh, 
Okay, now I'm going to draw a little circle here. This is going to be basically the shaft. Let's do a cleanup, so a uh, quick trim. I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to get rid of that. Oops. Let's do another one. Okay, there we are. Exit. <coughs> Pad it. Okay, just make it so they looks kind of what I have there is the uh, Okay, I'm going to make it like that. All right. And then I'm going to insert the second part, which is called the shaft. I'll call it the moving part. How about that? So insert a new part. Right click properties. Moving. Moving. It's a moving part. Moving. Okay, let's go make it. Double click on this. On a convenient plane, on that same uh, plane in the back, for example, I will sketch. Uh, this, uh, by the way, this space looks a little bit different from what you have because you have a, you know, this this end is closed, but it really doesn't matter. I'll just leave it the way it is. Okay. So uh, sketch. And I'm going to project that uh, circle, or or the other option is uh, draw a circle. I can project it. Sure, yeah, why not? I project. There we are. And now I'm going to close that circle. And how I'm going to do that is going to be maybe uh, uh, an arc. Right there. This is coincident with that center. Um, oops. <laughs> Something like that. This control that calls it coincident. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Exit. And I'm going to pad this. Okay. Good. And just so that it looks, the end looks like that, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So on that. On that uh, face, I'm going to draw a circle, concentric circle. And these don't look, uh, these don't look coincident, uh, concentric, so let me do them. Do concentric, so con this control that, and we make it concentric. Okay, good. And uh, we're going to draw a little circle here. That will be the hole that you see in the figure on the top. Yeah, that's good. Exit. Pad it. Okay, very tiny amount, maybe point, uh, maybe point two. Let's see, how point, point one. Let's see how it looks like. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Okay, very good. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna create a point there because we wanna draw the trace of the center of this. So I make a point, center of a circle, and this is the circle. Good, okay. And uh, now let's go save everything. Uh, file, oh, go all the way to the top, click on the floppy. All right, you can change the color and things like that. That's really irrelevant. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, now, uh, we go to assembly design, uh, fix the base. Anchor the base. Now there's going to be a prismatic joint. This is going to move. Uh, oh, this. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, you know what we can do? If we make a cylindrical joint here, if we make a cylindrical joint, then we can con can control is uh, uh, lengthwise motion and rotation. Okay. Or obviously I can make. A, or obviously I can make a prismatic. And a, 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 a cylindrical. That, that's not necessary. Anyway, there are other ways of doing it. I'll make a cylindrical joint. So coincidence between this axis and the axis of this, uh, uh, the axis of this uh, uh, cavity. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. 
So uh, let's bring this thing into the show mode. So this is a cylindrical joint. <clears throat> I can control its rotation and I can control its uh, uh, translation. Okay, very good. So now we're going to go to uh, uh, a digital markup, DMU kinematics, get the magic wand out. You will see that new mechanism, mechanism one, auto create, and there will be a single cylindrical joint with two degrees of freedom. Right there, right there. Okay, now first of all, in order to be able to control the lateral motion and rotation, I'll double click on this, make this thing angle driven and length driven, okay? So I'm gonna create rules for both of them. The only thing is that I don't want this thing to go in that direction, so I flip it so that it goes in the other direction. There was a blue arrow, see this blue arrow? So that, that one, okay. Good. I know that the mechanism can be simulated, that, that much I know for sure. <clears throat> okay, so let's do the following. Uh, remember, we have to put these laws into the uh, into the uh, CATIA program. So what we got to go, we're going to do is to go start. Uh, where is that? Uh, Knowledgeware. Okay, and then there's going to be uh, Knowledge Advisor. This is where we create our rules. I'm going to do two rules, one for translation, the other one for rotation. Let me start the translation first. Click on this. I'll call this thing translation. Rule one is for translation. Translation. Okay. Say okay. Good. So if you click, if you click on the mechanism, you get only the stuff related to the mechanism. But in this rule, all I want is this length. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say if time less than, let's check it out, less than six, okay, less than six seconds, to, oops, what is that? Do not forget the S, 6S. Enter. Then the rule is, uh, the speed of this thing is 5 inches over 6 seconds. 5 over 6. Okay, so we're going to go here. We're going to say equal to. Oh, sorry. Uh, enter. This length equal to. Parentheses. Five inches over six seconds times time, and there's time. Enter. And then it's else if. Okay, else if, or if you don't remember, just click on the keyword. There is else if. Okay, go back to parameters. Else if time is less than. Let's look at this, less than eight seconds, eight seconds, eight seconds, enter. The length, not this, the length, this command, okay, equal to, now remember, it's sitting at the location five inches right it's sitting at location five inches and it has to go to the left now so five you see that five negative that slope times time okay so we go here and don't forget the shift by the way so it's going to be five inches five inches negative five inches divided I think it was uh, two seconds, right? If you look at the uh, figure, you see two seconds there. Right there, two seconds. Okay. Uh, uh, times, parentheses, times, minus the shift. And the shift is uh, six, six seconds. Minus six seconds if you don't get it please sit down and think about it okay 
don't just copy what I'm doing because that's going to cause you a problem. And then what happens is that in the third stage, if time is less than 10, so we go here, else if, keyword, right, keyword, else if, times is less than, uh, actually this last one is the last stage, so I don't really have to do else if, I just say else, okay? I don't have to do else if because that's the last stage, right? Else, that means obviously it's bigger than eight. So uh, enter, uh, length equal to, equal to. Now, if you look at this figure, it is at position zero, distance zero at the at eight seconds at zero, and then it builds up speed again to the right. And it's gonna be four, Four, four inches over two seconds. Okay, so it's going to be zero inches. I'll just type it uh, so that you can see why we got that. Uh, four inches, four inches over two seconds. Okay, times parentheses, don't forget the shift, time minus eight, eight seconds. Oops, eight seconds. Okay, so uh, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here. There are no syntax error, etc. If I say okay, if there are no syntax error, it closes. Yep, good. There is a first law, translation. And then I click on that uh, icon again and I say rotation. And I go through the same shebang. Unfortunately, there is no cut and paste, so we have to go and type everything once again. Uh, but, of course, uh, the breakpoints are different. So if time is less than five uh, seconds, it goes uh, 90 degrees in five seconds. If time is less than five. So uh, if time, uh, let me click on uh, that so that it, uh, it uh, filters it. If time is less than, five seconds, the angle equal to, uh, uh, what did I say, 90 degrees, parentheses, 90 degrees, degrees, over, what was that, uh, five seconds? No. Five seconds, times, uh, time, else, if, again time, next break point is going to be nine seconds, right? Nine seconds, less than nine seconds, or by next break point, I mean this, nine seconds, enter, Angle equal to, now let's see, where does it start from? It starts from 360 degrees, right? 360 degrees. Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm sorry. Wait just a second. This is, uh, starts at 90, right? Starts at 90 and starts at 90 and then builds up. Builds up, uh, so that is, 270 uh, degrees in four seconds. Okay, so it starts at 90 degrees. I have to be very careful here. Uh, 90 degrees plus, <coughs> plus uh, 270 degrees divided by, let me see, 270 degrees uh, this is 270 degrees over a four second interval. Over a four second interval. Over a four second interval. What's going on here? Right there. Yeah, divided by four second times parentheses. 
prime minus nine, uh, minus, uh, not nine, uh, minus uh, five, minus five seconds, minus five seconds. I mean, obviously, if you type the wrong stuff, when you plot this, it's going to show up. Five seconds. Okay. And finally, else, here's the time, uh, here is the angle, equal to, you start at 360 degrees, minus, because it goes down, you see that, the slope of this line is negative, and it's going to be 360 degrees over one second interval. So uh, minus uh, 360 degrees DEG divided by one second times parentheses. There's your time. And the breakpoint is minus nine seconds. Okay. Once again, if I didn't make any mistakes here, this should uh, not give me any syntax error. And it didn't. Okay, very good. So now uh, we're going to go and uh, uh, do a simulation with laws. So we go here. Obviously, we are not in the right spot here. We have to go to DMU. Just double click on this. It'll take you there. You are in DMU. And get the simulation with laws right there. Okay. Oh, uh, we need a sensor, right? Now, I want to remind you that uh, uh, the two uh, the two uh, commands here, although yes, I do need a sensor, so let me go ahead actually and do do that. So I'm going to go create a sensor. Uh, so the reference is that base, and the point that I want is that point. Okay, good. Then we're going to go simulation with laws activate sensor, all I need are these two command command uh, uh, command uh, joint commands, okay? Now, I'm not asking for the velocity of this point in the x direction or y direction or the acceleration. All I want to do is to plot these two, make sure that it's exactly what I entered, because otherwise uh, things are wrong, right? Let me see, am I asking for something here? Beside that, uh, oh yeah, uh, okay. I suppose I want a magnitude of linear velocity. Okay, we do want it. Okay. But first, let me check my work. First, let me check my work before I do plot these things. Let me check my work. Okay. In other words, if the two plots that I get here based on these two is not right, then obviously whatever I do after that is nonsense. Now, uh, uh. Good. So we say uh, play it. We play it. Okay. Good. And graph it. This is these two. It better be. Otherwise, I made a mistake. I'm pretty sure they are. Okay. Now that I know that this is fine. I don't need this. This is a confirmation for you that you did everything correctly. You rewind, clear the history, and then you say, okay, what do I want here? I want, uh, I want selection. You were asked to plot two things. You were asked to plot, uh, uh, I haven't done the trace yet. I will do that. Okay, let me actually, let me actually uh, do the trace. Let me actually do the trace, and then we're going to, well, well, while we are at it, we might as well do this. Okay, so uh, plot the magnitude of the velocity, linear velocity, and magnitude of, oh, oh, two things. Magnitude of the linear velocity. Let's do this one. Magnitude of the linear velocity as a function of uh, time, obviously. So magnitude of linear velocity, let me uncheck these two, because I know these were correct, right? So linear magnitude of linear velocity is the same as linear speed, okay? And it's going to be as a function of time. So we play it. The history is clear. You can see that. You play it and you graph it. Okay, first make sure that uh, you are zo have zoomed out so that uh, I can see your units here, okay? 
good. And then remember how, how we do these things. We print screen, start a Word document, paste it. Oh, did I not, did I not do print screen? Let's try it again. Print screen, start the Word document. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, my print screen. That's interesting. But again, uh, oh, I, I was hitting page up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's start the Word document. Paste, home paste, there. And save this thing. File, save as, desktop. Where is my desktop? Uh, it was in this folder, a homework. Uh, no. Let me see, I called it July something. Uh, July, f uh, homework eight morning. That's where it is. So my first plot is linear, linear speed versus time. Okay. And this is one of the folders you're going to be have to submitting if this was a final exam problem. Let me kill that. Now, the second part, look at the second part is this. The second part of the problem says, or this part says, magnitude of the linear velocity that we just bought it against the magnitude of the linear acceleration. So what we have to do here, notice that I did not ask for the magnitude of the linear acceleration. So first of all, I'm gonna rewind. I'm gonna clear the history. On the selection, we already asked for linear speed right here. Magnitude of the linear acceleration is right there. We asked for it. Okay. We move this thing out of the way. We uh, uh, play it. Okay. Under options, we ask for customized plot. Add. It says, what do you want? I want the linear speed that I asked for versus the linear acceleration that I asked for. Uh, Where's the linear acceleration? Right there. And then I say, okay. And uh, uh, yeah, graph it there. Again, zoom out linear speed versus linear acceleration. Okay, and once again, print screen, start the Word document, paste it, Well, that's not the wrong, right one. Delete. Let's go back here. Print screen. Oh, print screen once again. I press the page up over here. Home paste. Save it. File. Save as. Save as. In that folder which was, I believe it was here, yep. Uh, and I'm gonna call this thing uh, linear speed versus linear acceleration. Okay, save. I can close this. I can close this, rewind. Say okay and close.
What is the part that I have not done? Right here, generate the trace of this, okay? So, okay, the main difference between what we have to do now and what we did for generating trace before is the fact that uh, here we have uh, uh, some rules specified, okay? And the trace depends on these rules. Anything that we have generated in the past was a single degree of uh, a single degree of freedom mechanism, and it really didn't matter how fast this thing moved. Uh, it always gave that point, always gave the same trace. But here, that's different. So you have to you have to do the trace in a different way. Here, here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on trace. And it's going to come back and say, okay, uh, I didn't even bother generating a mechanism and, uh, or a simulation re replay. I just say, look, trace, click on the trace, select mechanism one. There's only one mechanism here. And says element to trace out is this point. And uh, reference product is, is uh, that, that's fine, product or the base, it, it doesn't matter, okay? And then we say, okay, there we are, you see? Now, in the past, what we did, we first created the simulation, gen com then, uh, then uh, uh, compiled that simulation, okay? And then we can go and pl plot the trace. But here, uh, we don't do that. We just directly cl click on that thing which said trace and select the mechanism. Okay, if it's already selected, that's fine. And then pick the point and say okay, and it's going to do that. The rest of the stuff is the same. So we go to file, save management, trace is going to be in that folder. Remember, base, moving. Uh, and uh, remember, there are two two files in there. Two looks like I have deleted them. Uh, one of them, well, one one of them was Word Word document, which I used to to plot the uh, what is that uh, uh, velocity versus time. The other one is velocity versus acceleration. Uh, and it looks like I either put it in the wrong spot or let me actually see. Oh, if you say all, I'm pretty sure you're going to see it. Right now, it just said, just show me the cat part. It's, it, I bet it's going to be there, but right now we don't see it. So we say my trace, save it in there, and OK. And I bet if you went to that folder, you're going to see those things too. So let me see now. Uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, Homework 8, right? Uh, desktop, Homework 8. That must be somewhere. Uh, now, these things are important when you do this uh, for your final exam. Uh, let me see. Oh, there it is, right here. You see that? They're there. And this is the trace that you just put in there. Now, if you go to Katia, we can close this. And then we can say insert existing component in there. And there is a trace. Uh, it's the wrong folder. We go up, desktop, uh, homework eight, right there, trace three, we say okay, and you, you're gonna see that right there. And in fact, if you play it, if you do, for example, simulation with laws, and just say play it, that point is gonna go through this path that you see, okay? It's right there, right now. <laughs> it's kind of hard to track it down unless you go at the, you do it one by one, you can see that. You see this? You see that that point is turning? See this? You see? Let me make this thing maybe uh, uh, three. There. So where is it? Right now it's this location right there. Okay, so uh, that takes care of this. Uh, 